So usually when we evaluate enzymes, we evaluate the performance of the animals. But in this case, we, we didn't evaluate only the performance, but also the environmental impacts. In our research trials, we, we, we could see that it increases the conversion rate, it increases the digestibility of our nutrients. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today I'm joined by Felipe Hickman, a PhD candidate at the University of Laval. So Felipe, you were just on the show not too long ago, but just in case there are any listeners that missed the last episode, could you give a quick summary of your education and background? Yes, sure. So I'm originally from Brazil, in the south of Brazil, and I'm doing my dual PhD program at URGS and University Laval in Quebec, Canada. And I'm working on novel feeding strategies on pig and poultry production and what's the impact on the environment. So I'm working more in enzyme supplementation, the impact of low and crude protein and precision feeding. Awesome. So yeah, kind of on that, what you just said, as I read the study that you did um, about using beta mananase supplementation as a more eco-friendly feeding strategy for both swine and poultry. Um, so what was kind of the idea behind the hypothesis and what all did you see? So let's start from the beginning. What are beta manins? They are fibers present in the hemicellulose part and they are present in all vegetables, especially soybean meal. And there are two big problems with that. Given its fiber content, it increases viscosity that creates a gel that affects the intestinal transit, which reduces absorption. And also it's a pump, it's a pathogen associated molecular pattern that when encountering a defense cell, it creates an inflammatory process. So with this inflammatory process, there is a loss of nutrients and the animal will use part of the energy that could be used for production for the inflammatory process. There are some alternatives to mitigate this problem with beta manans that's creating some complex diets. So you reduce the soybean meal in the diet and increase some uh, other protein sources, but it increases the cost of the feed. The other strategy would be use some microbes to digest this fiber, the beta manans, or also using some beta mananase that our focus here in our study. The beta mananase effects are they reduce, they reduce the viscosity they increase the absorption, uh, so the feces are more dry. So, which means that the digestibility is higher and higher is the conversion, conversion rate. It creates a probiotic effect, so with the beta manans that are degraded, that increases the intestinal health of the animals. I'm not sure if everybody knows, but beta mananase is the second most enzyme produced worldwide worldwide. It's not very common in the animal science uh, 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 scenario, but is really very used in the cleaning industry. So then I read the study that you did about evaluating uh, the impacts uh, with beta mananase um, on the environment. So would you mind sharing a little bit about that study then? Yes. So usually when we evaluate enzymes, we evaluate the performance of the animals. But in this case, we, we didn't evaluate only the performance, but also the environmental impacts. In our research trials, we, we, we could see that it increases the conversion rate, it increases the digestibility of our nutrients, given the, what I mentioned. But you also evaluate the environmental impacts of using beta mananase in feeding programs. So for this case, we evaluated the main environmental impacts associated with pig production that are climate change, eutrophication, and acidification in two contrasting regions in Brazil. That's a main producer of pig production. So for this, we use in our diet formulation two energy matrix. 45 kilocal of metabolizable energy and 90 kilocal of metabol 
metabolizes energy per kilo of feet. That are the two main energy matrices using during diet formulation. 45 is a little bit more conservative, but we can have a higher values like 90, even 150 kilocal, depending on, on the study. So we evaluated that instead of the animal using such energy uh, for the inflammatory process, for intestinal health, we can use this saving for doing a diet formulation to formulate those feeds. So we formulate all the feeds throughout the production system. So we, we consider pre-starter, starter feeds, growing one, growing two, finish one, and finish two feeds for the animals. And we evaluate some complex and simple diets in the beginning, and also diets with and without beta mananase. And what we saw in all the diets that we have formulated, given the lower energy that is needed for those diets, we are reducing the amount of soybean oil in those formulas. So when we reduce an ingredient that has a high environmental impact, like uh, soybean oil, we are reducing those environmental impacts. So we made a regression when we are reducing the amount of um, soybean oil content, we are reducing the uh, we are reducing the impact of climate change and also reducing the impact of eutrophication up to 16% of climate change and 27 of eutrophication. So it's a considerable amount, especially because feed accounts for the, is the highest environmental impact when we consider feed, feed, produ feed production. So our main, main findings of this study was that if we are using beta mananase, we are saving some energy during diet formulation, giving the lower amount of soybean oil content, and we are uh, having some environmental benefits that's reducing the impact of climate change and reducing the impact of eutrophication. For acid acidification, it was not significant because depending on the diet, it will more or less acid. But overall, these were the main findings of our study. A leader in swine nutrition solutions driven by science. Novus's products and services look at the whole animal, focusing on productivity and well-being, in order to feed the world affordable and wholesome food. For more information, visit Novus's website at www.novusint.com. Gotcha. So just make sure I understand that correctly then. So it's essentially because of the the lack of the inflammatory response from the beta manins in the feed, the pigs kind of have a, thus a, a lower energy requirement with the beta mananase. So you don't have to have a high, as high of an energy level in the feed. Is, am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, exactly. So instead of fighting against this inflammatory process, the animal could use, could save some energy for production. So we are using an energy matrix during diet formulation that could be used for the animals. So this energy savings has a great environmental impact given the, the change in ingredients in the formulation. Gotcha. Yeah, I like this study and kind of how it took a little bit of a, a different spin on things from the typical um, supplementation. Instead of looking at the performance of the animals, you kind of bring it back to the feed mill and see how it has an impact there and how it improves things there. Um, so kind of on that same line then, are you planning on doing any more research trials along these same lines, looking at different feed levels at the back at the feed mill, I guess? Yes. Yeah, so we are working on novel feeding strategies. One strategy is enzyme supplementation. So this was the first study that worked with beta mananase, but now we are trying to work with phytase as well. So first we need to have a meta-analysis to see what's the overall impact of using phytase on the performance of the animals. After that, we will include this in the model for the life cycle assessment so we can evaluate what's the environmental impact of using phytase in pig uh, production. So this is the next step. So what uh, phytase is doing, especially when you consider the, the lower amount of phosphorus that's being excreted and what's the impact on eutroph eutrophication, for, ex for example. Gotcha. Interesting. So yeah, I'll be definitely glad to have you back on to uh, talk about that when you finish that study. But um, I think that's all the time we have. So thank you again, Felipe, for coming back on the show again. Thank you. 
Yep, and everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey everyone, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com.